Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Rocket Air AR glasses. This is a part of the latest wave of wearable video glasses on the market, similar to the X-Real or N-Real Airs. They are getting progressively more popular, and the concept is you can have a larger virtual screen size, in this case a 120-inch OLED panel, that you can take with you when on the go. For example, like a portable monitor, except a little bit more private. Alternatively, if you're enjoying content watching movies, you can sit on a longer flight and have that more immersive experience. That being said, the concept of a pair of video glasses isn't necessarily new. When iPods were still popular, there were several manufacturers making them. LG even tried something similar. When the G5 was announced, they made this extra accessory for the phone that you can plug into to enjoy movies when on the go. The problem is, a a lot of those wearable glasses were just not very comfortable because the weight is too heavy, in addition to the quality of the displays are often subpar. The majority of early generation head mounted displays or HMDs typically used LCD screens which didn't have as much contrast and more importantly resolution was a lot lower as well, in some cases as low as 360 or just 480p which on a panel that is essentially super close to your eyeballs it results in quite a fuzzy image and the virtual screen size as well just wasn't very impressive. So the result was you might use them for one or two occasions and kind of put them in the drawer collecting dust. So the question is whether these latest generation models have improved enough to be recommendable to the mainstream. I'll also mention that these video glasses shouldn't be confused with VR glasses, which tend to be even more closed off for extra immersion when you're gaming. They typically have more motion tracking technology inside and have to be tethered to larger computers to function. But the thing is, VR glasses are always going to be much heavier and bulkier than these video glasses which is why even though you can watch videos on VR glasses, it's not going to be the most enjoyable experience just typically because of the weight. What is interesting though is Rocket as well as Inreal slash Xreal kind of market their glasses as AR glasses, even though in my opinion that's kind of a misconception. They're primarily still video glasses meant for sitting down, enjoying entertainment, since the AR or augmented reality aspect is kind of lacking. Still, the reason why it's branded like that is because you can kind of see how the screen is in a way semi-transparent, so that's why we can even see a portion of the virtual screen here on camera, but there is another private shade that you can snap on to completely close it off but in this particular view it's almost like having sunglasses where you can still kind of see the surrounding world in a slightly darkened shade and then there's a virtual screen in the middle of your vision so that transparency mode is essentially what they're marketing as AR even though it's not really as good as say Microsoft's HoloLens or Magic Leap headsets from back in the day. Those were true augmented reality products because the screen was transparent and it was interlacing objects on top of the physical world with more sensors including cameras. So for example, if you're looking around you, you can see some kind of virtual objects that you can place on top of your actual table, things like that, versus this is still mostly just a static screen that has kind of a semi-transparent filter on top. But regardless, as long as you have that in mind and you're primarily using this for media consumption, watching videos, or even doing a bit of productivity, linking it up to a computer, uh, typing in some documents, or reviewing a PowerPoint, that can still be a good application. One other aspect of the Rocket Air that I do really like is that it is one of the only brands of these current video glasses to have diopter adjustments built onto the top. That means if you are nearsighted, if you typically wear prescription glasses, you can remove those glasses and still toggle with the dials and see clearly, which is not the case, by the way, on the Inreal Xreal Airs, and so those require you to get proprietary prescription lens that will fit with those glasses, which can often be an extra cost. Not to mention you have to fiddle around with some additional parts that you snap on, or you can wear your glasses and then put these glasses on top of them, which kind of makes them an uncomfortable experience. So again, if you are a prescription glass wearer, I would say that is an area that Rocket Airs are going to be your best bet in terms of natural comfort, and hopefully this is something that gets integrated into more designs from other manufacturers. That being said, I do believe the x Airs are a little bit more stylish in their aesthetics. They kind of look like Ray-Ban or even normal sunglasses as you're wearing them. And perhaps that's why the x real slash n Airs are just more popular at the moment. They're kind of the market leader in this space. 
Another area that I think these current gen glasses have improved on is just having the benefit of adopting latest gen technology. Not only the display tech, which is sharper at full HD resolution, so it doesn't look as pixelated, and they're using OLED or really micro OLED screens from Sony, so contrast is excellent, but more importantly, the I.O. A lot of these are just connecting using USB Type-C, so any standard products, including smartphones with video output, laptops, gaming consoles can all be easily connected and just transformed to the larger screen experience compared to past devices which required often just a proprietary plug. For example, back in the day when Apple was still using 30 pin, those glasses could only work with iPods. Alternatively, they were just extremely bulky and couldn't be really used when on the go. Case in point, the Sony HMZ T series were some of the best video or cinema glasses from back in its day, and they were one of the few to also use OLED displays at the time, but this was only 720p, and you had to connect the glasses to this very bulky kind of processing unit. You can think of this as the equivalent of a modern-day smartphone, uh, but this box also enables you to then connect by HDMI to other devices. But obviously it's not going to be a very practical way to travel if you're also carrying kind of a DVD-sized box with you. Really, it's only when looking at these products side by side do we realize how impressively small these latest-gen models have gotten. Now we have a model that is even sharper, more impressive technically than one that was almost four times its size and weight. Just like some of the other glasses, they are made predominantly out of polycarbonate plastic. That's a contrast with smartphones that may use higher quality materials like metal and glass, but obviously that's going to be heavier and not as comfortable. So I think it's a good trade-off. It feels reasonably built, I would say. There are some foam pads on the inside of the stems here that will add just a little bit more comfort. And then on the inside, the nose piece can also be removed as well as adjusted if you want one that is a little bit larger versus smaller. It's made of silicone rubber and feels actually quite soft and comfy, holds its place quite well. There's a bit of memory wire inside too, so you can bend it slightly at an angle that you prefer. And similar to bone conduction glasses, they have speakers built onto the sides, so as you are wearing them, they're going to be quite close to your ears and temples. You can hear the audio, and it sounds decent. Volume tends to be satisfactory, even if they don't have the biggest bass, as expected from drivers that are so small. Alternatively though, if you're using your phone or laptop, you can just pair some Bluetooth buds or headphones for better sounding audio and more privacy, since this type of open design will still leak a little bit of sound. And one other thing I do like about the Rocket Air's design is they are really using very standard parts. So these glasses are literally just a USB Type-C to USB Type-C connection. You plug them in and it draws power, as well as shares the display from your phone, computer, etc. And this cable again is completely detachable, it's standardized, and you can replace it if it ever breaks, compared to TCL's as well as Enreal's glasses. So Enreal uses a magnetic proprietary cable uh, that is going to be a little bit more costly to replace compared to TCL actually solders their cable directly onto the glasses. It cannot be removed, and so if the cable breaks, you're kind of out of luck. So out of the bunch, I think that Rockets are the most, again, universal, the most standardized, which means repairability is the easiest and the most convenient. Otherwise, located on the right temple, you'll also find just a simple power key that you can tap on for a few seconds to turn the glasses on or off, as well as then just tap once while the glasses are on to switch into three brightness profiles, uh, kind of a low, medium, and brightest mode, depending on your surroundings. And I will say right off the bat that visibility in terms of brightness levels are not really a problem. In fact, one can argue that they might be even a touch too bright on the minimum setting. So these are extremely, extremely powerful micro OLED displays here. Now in the box, aside from the glasses and just a Type-C cable, you also do get a hard shell carrying case with pretty neat extra when on the go. By the way, Rocket also sells an optional remote called the Rocket Station, which serves as an alternative to your smartphone. It's powered by Android. You can think of it as an Android TV box that you plug the glasses into with its own battery. Uh, but again, you can just use your phone instead if you prefer. Other quick specs here include they weigh in at 83 grams, which is relatively light, and as far as again comfort is concerned, I was able to watch a film that was around two hours, two and a half hours, and didn't feel too much fatigue after removing the glasses. Yes, they're still going to be heavier than normal sunglasses and regular prescription lenses at the end of the day, but definitely a huge leap compared to past-gen products. Keep in mind that there will be a cable plugged in onto the end of the glasses, which protrudes a little bit further outward. So if you're resting your head against 
a pillow that is really soft or digging into the back of your head, it might still poke outwards at the glasses a little bit, providing a bit of extra resistance. I just point that out because if you are, say, lying completely down in bed, well, it can still kind of cause a little bit of play because of how far out that cable extends. And as far as the virtual screen is concerned, I would say the 120 inch claim is not too far off. That is, the screen feels like it's around maybe 3 meters away from you. There's a bit of distance. And what's impressive is the optics on here are relatively comfortable, so I didn't notice too much eye strain or fatigue as I was watching the film either. Now one thing to keep in mind though is, as aforementioned, these are just video glasses, they don't really come with any motion tracking capabilities like VR glasses, and so the vision is mostly persistent. In other words, the screen will always stay in the center, even as you're tilting your head around, it's not like your vision in terms of the virtual space will change. I just point that out because if you are doing a lot of work or you're in a scenario that you're constantly moving your head around or under a super turbulent flight where it's always jolting, then keep in mind the screen is also going to kind of jerk along. But as long as you're in kind of a normal environment, sitting down mostly, not doing too much vigorous head movement, it still seems like a comfy enough experience, I would say. And what's impressive here is that the screen is quite sharp. So again, 1080p I think is sufficient in terms of clarity. I'm not able to see too many pixels despite the larger virtual screen size. The field of vision is obviously not quite as exhaustive as on VR glasses where you're almost immersed 360 degrees, this obviously still feels like there is a monitor or you have a TV that's kind of hanging in front of you and everything else on the outside is going to be just a wall that you don't have uh, virtual content on. But it's not too bad. Again, the screen size has definitely gone larger compared to older gen glasses. And sharpness even on the corners and edges also looks quite good. Text details are mostly legible as well. So if you are looking at a document or images on a PDF, it still is an enjoyable enough experience, I would say. Obviously, as with anything related to VR, AR, video glasses, it's kind of hard to get the full extent just through a video since I'm filming through a camera here. So this is a category where I have to say, like VR glasses, it's something that you do really want to try if possible uh, to get kind of the full experience and idea of. But in general, it is a fairly impressive visual experience. Colors are really lively and vibrant. And again, if you are connecting this to a smartphone, such as on Samsung devices, they often have a desktop mode that gets triggered and your phone becomes a trackpad. You're able to do a little bit more work in that mode as well. Here's also a demo of the brightness levels from the maximum going down now all the way to the minimum setting so you can tell the range of control. And then yes, when looking on the other side, if you don't have the privacy shade snapped on, you can see kind of a smaller mirrored image that is inverted of the actual screen. Here is an alternative view from the bottom of the glasses. So essentially that is the postage stamp sized uh, OLED panel and it's being reflected using optics and mirrors uh, as you're looking at it from the other angle into a larger screen size. So it's quite clever in terms of how the design here is engineered. One other comment is that on some of the earlier generation video glasses, they tended to get a little bit warm after prolonged usage uh, on areas that are closer to your forehead region because of the bright nature of the small micro OLEDs. However, I would say the design of this one is pretty good in that it's well spaced enough uh, that it doesn't come into direct contact really with your forehead region, so heating or getting too warm is generally not an issue. As for optimal position, this will vary from person to person, but in my case, it felt a little bit more comfortable if it was slightly lower on my nose, so maybe just by a few centimeters or so rather than pressed all the way up. So that gave me a slightly better view on the entire display without anything being obstructed. And as far as doing a little bit of gaming is concerned, which is one other advertised use case if you connect it up to your phone or a Nintendo Switch, for example, Steam Deck, that definitely does work. And again, you have essentially a virtual monitor with you as you're playing back those titles. Generally, it works quite well. Just keep in mind you're getting a relatively standard refresh rate on these as opposed to something ultra quick like 120 or 240. It is superior to just playing or watching content on your phone display for sure. You just get a much larger, more relaxed view. Last but not least, I will mention that Rocket have also developed an optional companion app on their store that you can try out, but it's not necessary to use these since, again, anything that has video display output can work just fine. You can go inside into kind of a file manager space where you can also play back videos that you have on your phone. It can also view back 3D video files as well for a little bit of extra immersion, very similar to a simplified Android TV box UI that they have in here. But again, it's not really necessary in my opinion. You 
you can just mirror the screen on your phone to do what you are accessing already, but it is there if you want to access it. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on closer look at the Rocket Air AR glasses. And as aforementioned, I think of these more as video glasses or head-mounted displays more than AR per se, since there isn't much engagement with the virtual and physical world. But what is impressive here is on comfort as well as display quality, those two areas have definitely improved significantly compared to older generation of this tech that we reviewed many years ago. They're light enough for prolonged wearing as well as comfortable enough for carrying when on the go that it doesn't become a burden if you're just traveling, plus the fact that it's universal working with pretty much any standard smartphone or computer these days, eliminating the need for any proprietary gear that just creates friction for the overall user experience. So these are pretty significant improvements and I can see why finally this is starting to take off and get some more mass adoption. All in all, I would say if you are looking for a way to enjoy content when on the road, and especially if you wear prescription glasses, and I think the Rocket Airs as well as the Rocket Max can be a really strong option to consider. I would actually give them a recommendation if you are looking for video glasses of this kind. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Rocket Air glasses.